Hi, this is Leslie Langnall with Make Parts Fast here at the Rapid Plus TCT Show, and I'm here at Mark Forged with John Riley, and this is one of the few smaller metal additive manufacturing systems, and you kind of do a unique process of extruding metal. So what was the, behind the decision to extrude rather than do a powder-based kind of metal system? So we've been uh, extruding material um, in our composite printers for years now. Okay. And actually, uh, the way we do the composites, and these are some of the composite parts you see right here, is we take a nylon as a base material, and we mix it with chopped microcarbon inside of it. And then we print that into the shape of your part, and then we reinforce it with a strand of continuous fiber. So that's, that's the technology we had on hand. Uh, and it occurred to us that you could take a metal powder and uh, blend it with a plastic binder, much like the nylon holds the carbon fiber, and the process would actually be very similar. So we had a lot of familiarity with extruding these types of okay. compounded materials. There happens to be a very common material like this for metal injection molding, which is an industry that's been around for like 30 years. And so uh, the idea was to take the material that is used in metal injection molding, and instead of injection molding it, it's the same thing you do when you extrude plastic. Instead of injection molding it, print it into the shape of your part one layer at a time. Because it's built on the same chassis sort of uh, structure, and there's a lot of technical lifts to get the rest of, you know, there's some, there's some changes that need to be made to the platform, but we were able to reuse a lot of existing infrastructure. You get a machine that's a lot more affordable and a lot smaller in size. So the translation between machine size to actually build volume is a lot smaller, so it fits in a lot more places. But I think most importantly, it's brought the cost of metal printing down to $125,000 for an end-to-end -end system that'll get you a metal part. So that's a dramatic improvement in accessibility. Um, and then there's some nice benefits to the material type as well. Because that metal powder is bound in plastic, it's rendered safe to handle. So it, it's a lot less dangerous to deal with when you're changing out material spools, you don't need to put on hazmat suits. Um, the protective equipment requirements and the safety data sheets are a lot less. Not inhaling um, powder. Or anything right. Like it's that. all it's all bound into the into the plastic material. And actually, we're not even melting the powder uh, in the printing process. We're just uh, we're just softening the plastic to extrude it, just like we do with the nylon with chopped carbon in it. All right, so now how do you get rid of the plastic material once you've printed the part? Yeah, so after you've printed it, it's the same post-processing as metal injection molding. So you okay. put it through a washing step that takes out half of the binding material, and then you sinter it in a furnace, which burns off the rest, and then causes the metal powder to sinter together into your final into your final part. Now, what kind of materials metal metal materials do you work with? Is it just one, or do you have a range? So, of them our first material to market is 174 stainless steel, and then we're going to follow on with a lot of different types of stainless steel. So you'll see or steels. So you'll see 316L. We're doing H13 right. and D2 and A2. Uh, we'll do Inconels, titaniums, copper, aluminum. Basically, any uh, material that can be metal injection molded we can extrude through a nozzle and then wash and sinter into your final part. And these are the same materials that you would use in metal injection molding. Yeah. So the data is already there. That's right. The spec sheets in fact, when we publish engineer. our data sheets on the materials, uh, we have the first one out for 17.4 stainless steel. We compare it to MIM standard across a wide variety okay. of ranges. So you can see that the performance of your part out of the furnace is the same or better as you would get from using a metal injection molding process. So you take like a known technology space and just different way to make the part. So now with this kind of a more affordable machine, what kind of applications can yeah, you so use it? It's interesting, our sweet spot, and this started with the composites, is really tooling and fixturing. Ah. Um, and specifically what we're doing in that sweet spot is offering a much more affordable, much faster solution to uh, tooling that you would typically machine out of aluminum. And so we're like usually 10 times cheaper than machined aluminum, and uh, it's ready that same day that you start the print. So in this example here, um, we have like a connecting rod that you would be making through a traditional manufacturing process, but then you need to do a CMM inspection on that piece, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. This fixture itself would be hundreds and hundreds of dollars if you were going to machine it out of aluminum. It's complex. It start with a large block of aluminum and it would take a lot of time. Uh, if you print it on one of our machines, it prints in a much shorter period of time. They won't scratch your part, and it gives you more geometric flexibility to create it. And it's like thirty-six dollars in material, or something much more affordable. That's not bad at all. Um, so you save you Plus save time. like a lot of money and time. Yeah. Uh, we find for people using our machines for these applications, they're getting return on investment in one to three months. Wow! So it's a it's a very compelling uh, place to use the machine. Now reeling that back to your question on metal, 
um, Metal starts in the same application space because there's a lot of places in tooling and fixturing where the surface hardness of plastic is not going to cut it. Right. Um, and that's where the hardness of metal starts to become more important. Okay. And so for like gripper jaws that interact with sharp surfaces, uh, tools that need high chemical resistivity, um, or areas where you need even stronger parts than our carbon fiber reinforced parts, which are as strong as aluminum, mm -hmm. um, that's when you get to a place where you want to look at a stainless steel or something. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate your time. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. And uh, that's what's going on with Mark Forged at Rapid Plus TCT.